Ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon and I wish uh, a warm welcome to all of you for joining us for this fireside chat session with Mr. Uh, Harminder Sani, the founder and MD of Wazir Advisors. And Wazir Advisors is a company that helps its customers kind of create, compete and grow the consumer-centric businesses across multiple industry segments that include retail, CPG, food, processing, and more. He himself has been an angel investor in a lot of brands that you know by now in the name Ink Fruit, Innov Acer, Rage Coffee, uh, Burger Singh, Purple Style Labs, and more. The topic that we have for this particular session is reinventing the in-store experience, which means we will be talking about merging the physical retail with the digital and how technology is able to enhance the experience within the stores and how it is able to bridge the gap between physical and digital retail. So over to you, Mr. Harminder Sani, our first question goes like this. Uh, could you please provide us an overview of the current state of brick and mortar retail and the role of technology in transforming the in-store experience overall? Sure. Thanks, Deepak, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? So, so the question when you ask about the brick and mortar retail, I think I personally think this was settled maybe five years ago that retail is retail, whether it's brick or mortar or online. Because from, like you mentioned, that we are in the consumer-facing businesses. So everything we think of, we think from a consumer point of view, and that's the reason businesses and the companies who serve them, they and people like us also exist. So with consumer point of view, every time I have t checked with the consumers, they think they don't think like online, offline. Or they don't think brick and mortar. Even these terms are most of the time 99% of the people won't be able to make any sense of that. What does brick and mortar mean, right? So I just going back to when it got settled. I think somewhere, if you remember, in 2014-15, we had this funding winter we had come into online businesses, and Flipkart was also getting challenged at that point of time whether they will survive or not. So I was in one of the conferences. I think there were maybe five, six hundred people there and I was the, one of the speakers there and in a panel discussion and everybody on what talking about customer acquisition, customer acquisition and I said that if we can just take a simple quick survey of those 500 people, right, what does this customer acquisition mean and we asked, so I asked people that everybody sitting on the dice is claiming that they are acquiring customers, does any one of you feel that you have been acquired? Not even a single hand. Right? Because no consumer is acquired. They don't think they have been acquired. It's only on this side of the table we believe we have acquired. So only on this side of the table we think, or this side of the counter at a retail balance, we believe that there's a brick and mortar, there's online, and there are all those things which are going. Because we need to put a sense around it. We need to do it in a certain way. But we bring consumer into the focus that don't think like that. So when you talk about consumer experience in the store, I think that's where the job becomes far more complex, that when you have to start thinking about it, because now the consumer is not even thinking in this differentiated manner. They have a shopping mission, they have a need. They come to buy something, they come to pick up something, or they think of buying something at some point of time. Today, the moment they think about it, they go online. They start checking options, right? But it all starts with that first thought, that I need something, right? That's where it all starts. And then they have these various options, complex, algorithms running in their head, right? Depending on all the inputs which are coming from the marketing side of it or from the past experience or the brands talking to them, that's when they take the call that how am I going to get this product? Whether he or she, shopping mission is the key thing. Because of this online and brick and mortar differentiation going in our minds and the way we are changing and then trying to bring a lot of technology into our stores, that's where the now, now a deeper understanding is required, what is consumer expecting as an experience in store, right? Today when consumers when consumer walk into a store, are they expecting a salesperson to walk up to them still and ask them, sir, may I help you? 
or are they already help they've already helped themselves because they already know they have done all the research they have come to the store with a very clear mind this is where i'm going to go this is what i'm going to look at this is what i'm going to pick up and this is the price i'm going to pay whether they are all they have it there or not because i'm going to tell them this is the price available online and i don't want to so it's all done there so that's where i think the role of technology and before that the role of the people who are wanting to give a better experience to the consumer comes in that how do you think about the whole thing get into the consumer mind get into their shoes and then think from that point of view and that's how we go about it great so that brings me to ask another question which is related to web rooming it's a concept that people describe for consumers who wish to buy a particular product they check out the details of the product pricing features etc online and then they uh, go to a physical store for or, or a showroom to buy that particular good so in terms of uh, a particular consumer, let's say, doing a web rooming, mm -hmm. right? So he has already made up his mind in terms of that I want to buy a particular article which is going to cost me this much and this is available in XYZ stores. Uh, when he lands at that physical store, the physical showroom of that particular brand, how do you think the brands can leverage technology to make sure that the experience that he gets is no different than what he got in terms of the features of the product the uh, details that he might be looking out for, the packaging is no different than what he saw during web rooming. And even the pricing is not much different at all. And the overall experience is pretty much in sync with respect to web rooming versus buying something from the store. So Deepak, where this whole, let's say the question itself comes from the point that as a company, we are thinking of our online and offline experience in a differentiated manner. They are different. Now we are trying to match the gap. Why even start from there? Why there is a gap that you have to make sure that these things don't happen? Where did the difference come in? It all came in because we are looking at these two things differently, separately. So it's in your head. As a company, that's where you have to change that because if you don't put it into two different buckets, then there's no work to be done there. It will be the same. Why there will be any difference, right? So now, web rooming, when we talk about, and you have in your question, and I think we are all that we use the word, we have said he, but the moment you come to she, right? She still goes to the store because in between they were like at least, in a period of just six months, I came across at least 10 startups who were wanting to do this whole mirrors where people can find their size and people can measure themselves, they don't have to try things, they, while consumers are wanting to try more and more. Has anybody asked consumer, is there a problem in trying? They are saying that it will save them from trying clothes. Women are wanting to try more clothes because how many pictures people are putting out of those trial rooms on Insta, right, and fading the background and doing all kinds of touch-ups and everything, but that's what they want to do. She is not going to buy all those six sizes, but she wants pictures in all those six sizes, right? They, they, there's no problem in trying. So where are all those technologies? Because the amount of money, and I think some of the companies had gone ahead and invested on those technologies. Expensive pilots were done. But the first time you think about it and then you think from a consumer, the answer is no, this is not going to work. But when you start getting enamored by technology, because all those people, when they were showing it to me, it was all coming from that, how complex it has been for them to bring this product to this level. But why did you even put in all that effort? But they were so enamored by their own work which they have done and the technologies they have discovered and the pieces they have put together, but it doesn't mean anything for the consumer. Consumer is not even wanting that particular technology. So web rooming is very, very different for people who are coming with, there is a gender differentiation, there is an age differentiation, and then there is obviously overall, let's say, the experience which people are seeking. Why are people even in the store? Right, because whatever they have done selection, they could have completed the shopping also there and there. Right, much easily. So why they are in the store? That's the question need to be asked. And once they are in the store, don't question that. Now they are in the store, they are in the store. They've used the technology as much they're wanting to use on their own. Beyond that, now we get to the next level. Usage of technology 10 years ago, 50 plus people were not buying online. Today they are 60 plus, but they are buying online. Right? That's happened when technology, facilitation, and all those things become ever encompassing. They're around you. Age goes away. So it's not that we are waiting all those 50 year old people 10 years ago to just die and they are irrelevant anyway and then they will, someday they will be 70, 80 and they will go away and we we'll don't have to teach them. You don't have to teach them technology. Technology has to make itself acceptable, make itself so easy to use and make itself so useful that they will figure it out. 
you go back in time and just while we're showing some of those movie examples the movie i think was was rajni gandha movie and if you see one of the scenes there this guy amol palekar says okay i'll call dinesh thakur actually say i'll call somebody and he goes to the phone this dial phone and then he picks up the phone and he dials a number talks to somebody and then dials it today children that's it those who have not seen those one they'll think that this guy is a genius right first what is that machine then they will realize oh it's a phone because he's talking to somebody on the other side but then they'll see how the hell does he remember all these numbers right and we all did right but today we are the same people do we remember any number right the simplest quiz the friends couples get together is that do you remember your wife's number and most of the people don't maybe there's no need to do that so it's not that technology has <coughs> educated me and taught me or something but i have just become used to it and everybody around me is also used to that so uh, a follow up question on that uh, a very re uh, diverse retail landscape that our country has what are the typical challenges or opportunities that brands or merchants can find when these consumers which have already done web rooming turn up to the store hmm so first of the things which companies are failing to do is when people turn up at the store so basic thing on retailing is always about making stuff available when consumers want it right that's the i would say the primary expectation a consumer has when they walk into the store that my size my color that package and that particular brand it will be available right that's where most of the brands fail even today and till the times somebody has taken the product to the counter and paid for it and money is in your account it's all rest of the effort is all futile so all that effort is done when somebody lands up and this is the problem which is not recent so that's the problem i'm saying technology is still trying to sort it out and the very few people today are focusing on that that part of it while most of the people are focused more on the experience part of it that's where i see the gap because even today you see the 96 way back in 90s when i first ever heard that there's something called retail as an industry right when i started working with kurt salman associates in us and that first time i learned about retail being an industry the retail is dukandar in india there was nothing like retail here so that time we were told that walmart like mcdonald's calls itself a real estate company i was told by achim and dave call that walmart calls itself a data company information company data was not the word people used to use information company and he he said that and obviously half of the things to make a point you exaggerate but he said that and there used to be how old are you deepak i am 41 41 so you may or may not know what a floppy disk is no i did use Vaguely. it vaguely <laughs> right <laughs> so most of you of know what a floppy disk is so floppy disk used to be a floppy disk right on which you used to store data so walmart in those days every year the amount of their data used to collect this was the claim made that the flop is if you put them in a single straight line one after another it will encircle the whole earth that's the amount of information slash data they used to collect at that point of time but what is the consumer experience in walmart stores do you have any sales assistants there do you have all kinds of screens floating around do you have people walking around with think pads right nothing like that it's just the products are always available at a low price that's what they used to do and to do that they had to use huge amount of technology even in the 90s even today they run on very their own custom made software because that's how it's a large company and they realized the need of it much before everybody else could even think of and that's why the world's largest retailer even today well they were 100 billion they were the largest they are 600 billion they are the largest right so that's how technology plays part there so once the consumer is in the store that's where that part of the technology has to come into play more than anything else more than anything else because today more than any other time the consumer who is walking into the store they have made up their mind to shop with you right True. not because earlier we were all walking like zombies into the stores and figuring it out once we are in the store then we are figuring out kya hai kya le sakte hain what's the range today what price is there any sales all this i already know so now when i am in the store that means i am very i have already made up my mind to buy and now you only can fail me by not even having that product in the store so that's where all the effort has to go into so maybe you are expecting about a different answer but i can tell you all that is answered before the consumer have walked into the store now is the other part which needs to be done and companies are still failing as they were failing in the 90s they are still failing on this part
So being an investor in a lot of companies which are there into retail and CPG business, uh, what is the trend that you have been able to observe while you take reviews and let's say participate in a uh, richer discussion with the founders? What has been the trend of let's say consumers uh, checking out stuff online and then uh, buying offline? Are there any complaints? Is there a gap in the expectations that they have been mentioning that okay online this was mentioned but when I turned up offline uh, the price was different, the experience was different, uh, there was nobody to assist etc. etc. Self checkout option was not there. Sure. What exactly has been the trend and uh, feedback? So Deepak, I was in your shoes back in 2003. So I was sitting like this and the person in my seat was Raghu Pillai. Our late friend is no more there and he was one of the pioneers of retail in India. He used to work with the RPG group earlier because they had Spencers and later he worked with various groups and last he was working with Future Retail. And so I asked him a similar question 20 years ago and about the consumer expe expectation and all of that. And then he said, Ki, hold on and he spoke to the crowd there and there were a lot of people who were from the retail industry. And he said, well, let's be very careful about launching new services for our customers, right? Because we do in the zeal of trying to impress the consumer and trying to take customer away from somebody else. But retail is such a transparent and of open business that anything you do, everybody gets to know. And next day it all becomes commonplace. But whatever you did, promise to the consumer, this is what we are going to do. Consumer also accepts it. First, they are very impressed with it. Ki, wow, great. Right? And that there are computerized points of sales now and I get my printed receipt, right? And there's somebody who can speak with me in English. All those things were like initial things which were being done in the retail side of it. When we are modernizing retail, so to say. And this, anything you do, consumers start expecting, now it's routine, right? So you may have sitting here in a time machine, looking at US, looking at Europe and Japan, and you say that all these things now we are modernizing retail, we need to do. His point was, open up slowly, offer as little as you can and as slow as you can because you will find it difficult to service all those expectations because you are the one who is, consumer is not expecting. Unko pata hi nahi hai what all happens there in the rest of the world. So you do bring in things slowly because you have to service all of that. To build those capabilities across your chain, across your organization or even in a single store or different department, it's very, very difficult task. So yes, that's what's happening here today because people are coming, becoming very, very excited or have been very excited about this technology part of it. They want to bring it on board and they want to offer it and they would do it and then the system start failing. It's like an open book exam. You are writing the question, you have to answer it. Why are you are writing difficult questions? So that's why I'm seeing that some of the people when they put those mirrors for trial and auto trial rooms and all of those things and telling you buy online, collect from store and web room. Can you service all of that? Yes, but work required. Those 30 year long nights are required to do many of those things. Everything cannot be done overnight, but people are trying and I think that's where you see all this hoopla or on Twitter and sometimes even when I see at home or somewhere else, people complaining or, you know, about service levels. Okay, fine, there's somebody failed on a service. What happened? Nothing. You finally got the product, everything happened, but you just you irritated that I was told that I'll get in 30 minutes and it came in 40 minutes. You are still there, right? You're not dead. 10 minutes delay has not caused you much harm, but you are so irritated you go online and you start putting all those reviews because it's on fingertips, so you do that. So again, this part that I see a lot of gaps, right? I see a lot of consumer complaints. I see a lot of reviews which are not good, but it all starts from what expectations did you give the consumer and fail to service. So control is in our hands. Then what all do we want to give to the consumer and before they, without being ready, we start offering many of those things. Great. So again, just to follow up on that. So what recommendation would you have for the merchants and brands uh, while they integrate technology to their retail stores? What should be uh, the key points on which they should uh, like be very concerned be very centric about the customer because anyways, customer satisfaction to delight, to ecstasy, uh, this is, this has to be defined by the brand itself, right? Customer will not be able to differentiate between the, uh, these three because uh, until unless he gets a communication that, okay, this is part of customer success, this is the delight and this is the ecstasy level, uh, whatever experience he gets at the store, that's what is the true experience. It's the moment of truth for him. 
right? So what are those uh, key uh, pointers or factors that every brand should be really concerned about while they integrate technology in their retail stores? So first is that technology, not for the sake of technology, right? Because sometimes for the, let's say to make a news or to make a point and to be seen as a technology savvy and technology forward company, people end up doing things and sometimes obviously I will say that there are marketing pitches made by technology companies could also be, and in general media talking about technologies, there could be a pressure and then competition doing it and you want to match up with that. But leave all of that aside. So, big part of this, like I say, I'll keep coming back on the same thing is that, why are you doing what you are doing? Right? That's the key point. Why are we doing what we are doing? And again, there are go back to basic questions which you have been taught about consumer and marketing and all of it, that what does your core customer want from you, right? Customer is not solely dependent on you because this word brand loyalty people talk about and I always say that brand loyalty is a wrong term, it's people are loyal to brands. At some point of time, consumers say that we have come to a level where I would like to shop with brands. But brand loyalty is, I think, is a myth. Nobody is brand loyal that way. No brands should be loyal to the consumer, but not the other words. When you are loyal to the brands, they are expect so every brand has to set their own expectation. Decide what they are promising, and that's what they need to deliver. And to deliver that, you have to do it in a unique manner so that your experience is unique, your relationship with consumer is unique, not doing what everybody else is doing. Right? This technology somewhere, the democratization of technology is actually making it very boring to an extent that Everybody is doing the same thing. How, how do I differentiate? Let's say technology in terms of fashion industry, if we talk about, long back, I think 30, 40 years ago, this whole thing moved into color of the season, right? Now what's happening with the color of the season? You walk into any store, everybody has now got that powder blue shirt for men, right? Five seasons ago, everybody had that sunny yellow T-shirts. What's the point then going to different brands, right? So same way on the technology side of it, why we are doing what we are doing is that's where this thing, and your point in terms of giving consumer that ecstasy and delight and all of those things, trust me, and it reminds me of something, one of my favorite author, one of the books, simple line there, I don't think he was trying to even make a point there, but I saw it there. Somebody said, this is the happiest moment of my life. And the next sentence was, how sad. There's nothing better to look forward to, <laughs> right? So you, you're trying to overdo yourself, you're trying to do something which you are saying that this is the peak. Boss, there is life after that moment also, right? So what you are doing is that consistent delivery of satisfaction, consistent delivery of what your promise to the customer, consistent delivery of the expectation consumer has from you. That's what is the key of building a brand, that's the key of building any business, right? And competition will always try to, and let's say the competition is something like thin air. It's there, but you don't, you just see through it. It's always there, you believe that it's there, and you know that it's there, but you see through it. It's only the lesser companies who are always seeing cons their competition as solid entities, right? And that's where they're trying to look at how they are doing, and they're trying to copy, and they're trying to mimic, and do all of that, and then start looking like their competition, and then consumer is confused. You all so where did the brand I used to shop with go? Color Plus. Why did Color Plus had to try and become Alan Solly? Right? Because Alan Solly had larger sale. So they said, Ki, yaar, ye log mal hai. why are we selling less? So let's try to become like that. And so where is Color Plus today? Right? So, so that's, that's where I think the core of everything remains that. You need to be very sure of what you are doing. You need to be very sure of what consumer promise you have made. And keep checking. Has your promise have been understood clearly? Because consumer may have understood something very, very different from, from your communication. Keep checking. Take feed, those feedback loops should be there. And that's how you go about that. Uh, a little different question this time. Mm. So sustainability and environmental concerns are gaining a lot of attention in retail industry these days. How do you see technology can help brands in uh, what ways technology can enable them to stay sustainable? Uh, because typically in all the retail presence that we have seen across sectors, you see large machines available across the stores, uh, it's a large infra, 
and the only purpose is to make sure that they are able to punch the bill for the customer, give him the invoice or charge slip and collect the payment, mm. right? And the inventor gets depleted. Mm. So do you see that there are newer technologies, the way uh, Cubuster has been innovating a lot of uh, things in the industry. We have launched one solution which works on a uh, card swiping machine itself. So eventually a business owner doesn't even need a big size hardware machine. If you have a card swiping machine, you can run your entire business on that, provided you are up for it, right? So there's not much of uh, investment happening on the hardware and there's a reduction, uh, significant reduction, I must say, 80 to 90% reduction in the e-waste that gets generated because after right. four to five years of usage, whatever type of hardware or company or quality of hardware you use, uh, it will start malfunctioning and you will have to get a new one. So you have to dump those devices, get new one. Yeah. So how do you think like sustainability and environmental concerns can be eased out using technology? So I think somewhere at the core of the environment sustainability is that it's everything to do with consumption of energy, right? That how much, and it's not even to do with the materials and all this to do with the energy consumption, where the energy is getting consumed. Cars need to run, whether you use biofuels or whether you use battery or whether you use solar power. At the end of it, it requires energy to run it. So which energy is the most efficient, which energy is most environment friendly, that's where it all comes down to. So these are much larger questions and when I look at it more so, let's say Walmart has gone, decided that, and I think even IKEA has decided that all their stores will be using renewable energies by a certain date. And it was much before all the countries started putting their targets on that. Why I'm giving the name of IKEA and Walmart here is that they are huge companies, very, very large companies. So once again, I think my message to the brands and retailers always remains is that you should pick up missions which you are able to, let's say, service also, right? So this ESG and sustainability and some of these part of it, while they are a matter of concern, but I think most of the businesses in India are not at the scale where they need to bother themselves with this from an initiative point of view. They need to follow what is being done and what is being asked for by law and all of that and whatever trends, wherever they can do it. Only part where it comes is that in technology companies have become larger than the companies they are serving. It's a very skewed thing. Most of the time professional service provider, B2B providers, they are smaller than the companies. But now they have become larger. I think the responsibility lies on the technology company side of it. So when I invested in capillary back in 2009, so one of the things which struck me was that they were saying that we will give, we will run the customer loyalty on the mobile phone. So one of the things which is going to do is that you don't have to fill a form and then after a few days you're not going to get a loyalty card. Your mobile phone is your loyalty card. And the moment you go there, you give your mobile number. Today's routine, by that point of time, they were global runner-up in the Qualcomm mobile technology competition from IIT Kharagpur, right? That's how fast forward the technology was at that point of time and then now it is universal, it's everywhere. So not having those paper forms, not having those couriers coming with your card and not having card in my pocket along with 20 other cards, I thought this is fantastic. That was one of the core reasons I invested in that company and still an investor, they hopefully will go for IPO soon. But that was, so if you really think about it, that's how the technology can be. The retailers cannot think about these kind of things, right? A brand could not have thought about it. Shopper store, first citizen still had all those processes going on and other people were trying to follow all of that. I think it had to come from a technology company. So retailers of brands, they need to continuously look for it that what can help them do these things. But the technology companies are the ones which you have to bring these forward and I think they are pretty much up to the speed, no doubt about it. Cloud in itself, I think it's a, now everybody understands it. The first time I understood cloud, I was like totally astonished and I think we are talking maybe 15 years ago because we used to have server rooms in our offices. Every office used to have a server room. And every few years we used to dump and replace and do all of that. Expensive, very expensive uh, cost at that point of time. But environment was maybe not the concern cost was, but like, it makes so much sense, right? So technology companies are so much larger than all the businesses put together in India that they need to bring it forward. We as brands and retailers just stay alert and say, <laughs> stay very, very in tune with what's going on. You rightly said that technology companies have uh, become far, far larger than the kind of customers that they have been supporting. And uh, I seriously uh, get to read a lot about uh, 
how companies decide that, okay, I should leverage a technology company and not build something in-house. So it's always a question of build versus buy. So what is the logic? What is my core capability? Should I actually have an in-house technology team, get the product developed, and will I be able to kind of cope up with the rapid change that's happening in technology, how markets will behave no, five Deepak, years later? I'll, I'll interject you here. I think any company is thinking like that. It's, I would say, immature. Even to think of build, I think in today's environment is absolutely immature. That, that's why I'm saying immature, because maybe they haven't spent time to learn or educate themselves or not even reading general media and still thinking of building. I think it's absolutely passe. There is no logic behind it. You're trying to build that. Do you have legal department in every company? You don't. Do you have consumer research department in every company? No. They used to be. Right? Obviously, very large multinational corporations will have their legal department, but there's scale. Right? Otherwise, every, even that part is outsourced. There used to be projects department in every company, right? Strategic, what, strategic units in every company. Indian companies were small. And just digressing, in year 1991, we liberalized 92 or something, 96, 97, every day in Business India, Business Today, Economic Times, you see every company coming with this, 2000 by 2000. That was like 2,000 crore turnover by 2,000. If I go and check the records by 2,000, there could be 20 companies who achieve 2,000 crore turnover. Today, I think in India, there are 50 companies who make quarterly profit of that much. Right? That's how the scale has changed. But at that low scale, people used to have these units in their businesses because there were, profession there were no outside agencies or companies that existed with core speciality. That's why they were forced to have it. Today's time, with all these technology companies around you, why will you even think of building? If you, if you can build anything on technology, the rewards are so high that go ahead and just do that business only. Forget about your core business then. <laughs> You'll make much more money. So the way uh, Wazir Advisors helps its customers to set up the operations and expand uh, uh, their business operations. Uh, in what sense and what way uh, these brands and merchants can leverage Wazir Advisors to uh, let's say, reinvent their in-store experience? Starting from the core customer, we have very well-defined uh, service which we offer to our uh, companies, uh, clients for many, many years. We have been, not the target customer, the core customer. The target customer is, you think about it, that when you're starting the business, once you are in the business, and very simple exercise which we do is that we take five, seven senior most people in the company, ask them, each one of them to fill the questions, define their core customer. And the results are always surprising. Always surprising. Everybody has a different core customer in their mind. Target customer, everybody knows. But the core customer, that who actually is your customer today, forget about what you set your target on. Who actually is shopping with you? Who actually is coming to your restaurant? Who actually is ordering your food? Who is actually coming and using your services? Right? When you find that core customer. So that's where it all starts from. <coughs> Once you know, find your core customer, your whole business gets into a redefinition mode. Right? And technology obviously is the center of it. But while it's the center of it, it's subservient to the business. That's how we approach it. We may sound like, let's say, traditional in thinking and all of that. One, I'm saying respect the technology companies and I'm wanting them to take more and more role in it. And secondly, I'm saying don't even try to do what technology companies can do. But when you are running your business, technology is subservient to the business. It has to be below the consumer being on the top, business being there, and then the technology which comes in. But then it's wide and deep. Once it is subservient, but it's deep and ingrained everywhere. And uh, there are multiple technologies which we keep on assessing, we keep on looking at it. We, we don't engage with technology companies in a way, let's say, partnering with them because we believe it moves very, very quickly. There was a time when SAP and I think they were Barn and all, we used to work with those people in those times. But today we work very, very independently with all technology companies and offer whatever best of the breed is at that point of time to our clients. Great insights, I must say. Uh, just to conclude this uh, particular session, uh, we talked about merging physical retail with digital, how you can bridge the gaps between the two, what kind of experience you should create for a customer when he walks in after doing web rooming to your showroom to make a purchase. And for the businesses and brands, they should really think about leveraging the tech players which are already existing because uh, building something in-house is always difficult and a, 
uh, cash guzzling business as to say uh, because technology keeps changing every now and then to cope up with the pace of technology is really tough so a smarter move could be that you leverage a technology partner's uh, competence and scale up your business. Uh, thank you so much for your time and thoughts and uh, valuable insights, Mr. Hamid Asani. Uh, we're really glad that we uh, have almost finished this session uh, on time, if not 